the Met Office produce forecasts, short-term forecasts, long-term forecasts for the whole world. A um, very important part of um, weather and climate work around the world is that, um, that, that everybody works together um, very closely in this. Um, on the weather side, uh, you have to have observations all around the world uh, in order to make the forecast. So all the Met services worldwide, they, they collaborate. We in, in the Met Office, we work very significantly on lots of different levels with Met services and climate services all around the world. So there are Met services that use our models for the short range weather forecasting and for climate work. We get involved in lots of, of um, collaborative projects. If you take regions in Africa that are periodically affected by drought or indeed heavy rainfall and flooding, um, of course, for example, drought can have a big impact on agriculture. And one thing that we've started to do is to predict the onset of the annual monsoon in the western part of Africa. The big thing for any National Met service is services for safety of life and property of citizens. That's the, the essential core function. And then the second core function is services for socio-economic development. So at a very fundamental level it's about saving lives, helping people to live. And then you start thinking about that and it comes down to helping people make decisions that make their life better. And that could be trivial at one level, do I carry an umbrella today because it's going to rain? Or it could be life-threatening decisions, which in a developing country with subsistence agriculture, what crops do I grow? Because if I grow the wrong crops, my, I won't have enough money to send my children to school or even I won't have enough food and my family will starve. From the time we started developing the service, indeed we were also improving the service delivery. And one of our obligations is to issue accurate weather information. So before the onset, we prepare a seasonal weather focus, first on the regional level, but then we downscale it to Rwanda, uh, to the country level and then we issue the focus to stakeholders. We are using different channels like radios, uh, newspapers, uh, TV. We have a plan of develop uh, our MET office, especially in terms of uh, capacity building, uh, purchasing the new and the, uh, have a new technology and the new instruments. Uh, so that will help us to develop the Met Office uh, and uh, have a strong structure. You know, as I said, we have various stakeholders and we regularly give them there with a the focus twice a day at least year. So we disseminate them mainly those who have access to internet, we are using internet. Uh, we use also radio and, uh, and also we uh, apart from radio, we are also using uh, the print media, the newspapers. We issue to the Kenya Rwanda newspaper regularly. Um, uh, we are soon intending also to be uh, possibly disseminating our focus by uh, transmitting using SMS. In this case, the, the biggest difference is going to be to um, help the um, local communities be aware of potential for heavy rainfall to lead to landslides and flooding. Uh, a, good, a good number of lives are lost each year in Rwanda and uh, primarily this is to save lives. So virtually every country in the world is going to be affected by climate change. They will see impacts. Okay, so um, the systems that the, the human systems in their country, the agricultural system, transport systems for example, um, all of these in general are uh, affected by weather and climate. If that is going to be changing into the future, then um, the governments will need to, to know about it so they can plan changes in their systems. In some cases, um, agriculture may become unviable, so they will need to plan for that. Good forecast, it, has, it, is a, it has a big importance on uh, public uh, because uh, they can plan their daily activities 
Uh, also, uh, it is helping in the farmers, uh, like uh, uh, water harvesting. There's always been a great demand for information on this time scale, beyond the weather forecasting time scale, but nearer term than, say, the century predictions that climate change is associated with. There is a really important window in the middle where people are actually planning and making decisions. These are people in government or individual users, right down to agricultural users, for example. Getting information um, about what the, um, the climate is, is going to be doing in the future um, into um, some areas of the world, especially the poor areas like Africa um, and the poor developing countries, is, this is a significant challenge. The farmers will need indeed to know the onset, the cessation of rains, so the accurate information actually helps them to determine on when to, uh, to, to do the farming, when to harvest and all that. So accurate weather information is very important. Ye <laughs> Yamirgana <laughs> If we can predict the weather, we can go and talk with insurance so that they can ensure that production. And then the banking system also will be happy so that they are sure that the production will be there, although there will be some distortion or some problems, then the insurance will come and compensate what will be lost uh, from the farmer. The ever-increasing frequency of disasters, extreme weather, extreme hazards, governments are taking that a lot more seriously than hitherto. Well, what, what can we do as a partnership to present and provide guidance that people can take action. And that's the here thrust of what we do here in the Met Office and also what we do with our partners too, globally. When you can forecast this severe weather, uh, there are many economical benefits, you know, because uh, we shall actually be reducing the disaster risk. You know, during disaster, in severe weather, you can have destruction of property and even people die. If we are predicting in one month to have a uh, uh, this uh, disaster to happen, actually, it's a, it's a disaster, then we can uh, store when we are having a lot of, or we can even bring water and secure it for the next uh, weeks to come where we have this uh, drought problem. If we are, we, we, we are sure that the rainfall will be not sufficient for agriculture, so the government can take a measure to initiate the, to intensify the irrigation measures and to get the food. Because you see, if we, we know that there is not enough food, we can get the food outside before the, 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 the famine come. Because it, during the famine, it will be, the cost will be higher than getting it before. There are, there are lots of activities, human activities, which are influenced by the weather and climate. So if that's changing, then obviously they need to know uh, how it is changing in the future. Your ingredients, your raw material really comes from observations. That involves satellite, observations from the ground, so that involves day-to-day -day surface observations. So observations on aircraft, not necessarily relate that to observation collection, but there's an, an instrument on each aircraft that takes readings of wind and temperature. 
all that co is coalesced and integrated to form a, uh, a gives an analysis of the a, a, a best guess of what the conditions on the atmosphere here and now. It's all about planning. They start planning if there is, for example, an aircraft coming from Nairobi or Entebbe or somewhere in Bujumbura in the region, they can just say, okay, wait, you wait until this phenomena or this uh, event has passed and then we can go, you know, it protects them from, you know, uh, wasting their fuel coming here. It protects them yeah, from entering into a severe weather and, uh, you know, it helps them for safety also. Uh, the weather forecast, okay, it has been important. It, it has been improve, improving from, as you said, for the last 10 years or 15 so, uh, due to, you know, the technology has come in now. You know, we use, there are a lot of instruments that are coming in and uh, Rwanda also cannot stay behind to buy those instruments. We do have, you know, instruments that are modern instruments helping us to, you know, to, mo to, to see the weather maybe in advance so that we can plan very well. So it has been improving and uh, also I think it will improve. We are going to improve also according to the plan that we have. You know, having good weather services, uh, it helps people, it helps people to still, it's, you know, knowing how to do things well in advance and uh, knowing how to plan for the future. Like uh, when you say good information, uh, climate information services, I remember very well some few years back uh, we had, we had, we had, so drought in this especially in the eastern part but these days uh, due to the due to the effort that the government have put in uh, now people have planted a lot of trees so now the information from climate has helped them to see that okay the information has changed they say okay, now the rainfall are there before they were not there so the information Definitely, the information from from meteorological is very important for the economic growth of the country. If you have better information about what the weather is going to do or what the climate is doing at the moment and what it might be doing in the future, then you can make choices in your business which either um, can help you to reduce your risk to, uh, against problems associated with the climate or uh, can take advantage of um, uh, benefits which a change in the climate might bring. We are developing capacity and soon we may also be having uh, increasing our network of automatic weather stations which can be placed in various areas where you can't see but and they are transmitting automatically the observed data to our station here at the headquarter. So with those infrastructure development and, uh, and also, also building capacity, human capacity. Uh, roads are very susceptible to damage in heavy rainfall seasons. Uh, they get washed away quite routinely by landslides, what have you. So certainly for the uh, construction industry dealing with the roads, there's a lot can be done. So seasonal outbreaks of malaria occur over large parts of Africa periodically. And it turns out that the um, mosquitoes and their life cycle are strongly affected by climate. And because there is some skill in seasonal forecasts of those climate conditions, it is possible to feed that information into malaria models and actually make potentially really useful predictions of the likelihood um, of a malaria outbreak. And of course that has all sorts of knock-on possibilities with aid agencies and possible measures that could be taken to adapt and mitigate some of the damage from that. The benefit from this is the, is, is the public, it's infrastructure owners, it's government. Early warning equates to early action. In order to actually take that forecast, actually make a real difference on the ground, we need to work with the response community, with government, with the public to really utilise that capability. The Rwanda government realised that uh, UK metrics can help us in various you know, uh, developmental projects within the meteorology service. Currently, we have a, a plan to install 22 automatic weather stations, which will send data every 10 or 15 minutes at the Rwanda Meteorological Center. In, in addition, uh, we, are, uh, we, we have supported the Rwanda Meteorological Service to, to have a, a training. So we have hired UK Met Office as a consultant. What we're doing here is building a MET service, which is delivering services now but should also be capable of going forward into the future and delivering good services to citizens into the, the, the future and adapting as the technology changes, as the science changes. 
I think for us, the thing that we would really like to see, uh, probably the most important thing that we would like to, to see, is to be able to really work with um, a MET service and a climate service in a developing country or in a developing a region involving the, um, developing countries, where we have really uh, good links with those um, the weather service and the climate service people and the information that we and they are able to generate together is able to get into local government down to communities and make a real difference to people's lives.